I was well into adulthood before I realized that I was an American. I was born an American and lived here all my life. But somehow it never occurred to me that being a citizen of the United States meant that I was an American. Americans were people who ate bland, plain food. Me? <laughs> I was Italian. For me, as I am sure for most second-generation Italian-American kids who grew up in the 50s and 60s, there was a definite distinction drawn between us and them. We were Italians. Everybody else, the Irish, Germans, Polish, Jewish, <laughs> they were the Americanes. There was no animosity involved in this distinction, no prejudice, no hard feelings. Just, well, you know, they were not like us. Our ways were different. Americans went to the supermarket to buy their food. What a waste. It was their loss. They never enjoyed the pleasure of a fresh, crisp look. We stopped at the bakery for fresh Italian bread. Somehow, by the time we got home, the end of the bread was always missing. When you got home, there were meatballs frying in the oil. Nothing tastes better than fried meatballs and crisp Italian bread dipped into a pot of gravy. There was another big difference between us and the Americanas. We had gardens. Not just flower gardens, but gardens where we grew tomatoes, basil, peppers, arugula, squash, and more tomatoes. Of course, our gardens thrived as they did because we had something else our American friends didn't have. We had grandmas. It's not that they didn't have grandmothers. It's just that their grandmothers didn't live in the same house or on the same block or in the same neighborhood. They visited their grandmothers. We lived with ours. And God forbid you didn't check in with Grandma at least once a day. I can still remember Grandma telling us about when she came to America on the boat and how life was when they first arrived and what it took to raise four boys and four girls in a small apartment. Of course, she told us all of this in her own version of Italian English, which we all learned to understand quite well. When my grandparents saved enough money and no one could figure out how they did it, they bought a house. And that house served as the family headquarters for the next 30 years. I remember how much Grandma hated to leave that house. She would rather sit on the back porch and watch the garden grow. But when she did leave for a special occasion, she would return home as quickly as possible because she said nobody was watching the house. <laughs> I, I also remember the holidays when the whole family would gather at Grandma's house. There were tables full of food, homemade wine, raviolis, and music. Women in the kitchen with their holiday aprons on. Men in the living room and kids, kids everywhere. I must have a thousand cousins, first cousins, second cousins, and some who aren't even related, but it didn't matter. My grandma would sit in the middle of all of this and smile, her dark eyes twinkling, surveying her domain. She was proud of her family and how well her children had done. Her sons all had good jobs and her daughters all married hard-working men who were good providers. And everyone knew respect. She had achieved her goal in coming to America, and now her children and her grandchildren were achieving their goals in this great country because they were Americans. When my grandmother died at a ripe old age, things began to change. Family gatherings were fewer and something seemed to be missing. Although, when the family did get together, I always had the feeling that Grandma was there. These days, we mostly see each other at weddings and wakes. Lots of other things have changed, too. The front door on the old house where Grandma lived is now covered by a wrought iron gate. The gardens are gone. The wine cellar is empty. Now on the holidays, there are no more rounds, visiting family, only occasional trips to the cemetery where my grandparents and many of my uncles and aunts lie. The holidays have changed too. The great quantity of food we once consumed without any ill effects is supposedly no good for us anymore. Too much starch, too much sugar, too much cholesterol, too many calories, nobody bakes, everybody is too busy, and it's easier to get it at the store. 
The difference between us and the Americanas isn't so easily defined anymore. And maybe that's good. My grandparents were Italian Italians. My parents were Italian Americans. I'm an American Italian. And <laughs> my kids are American Americans. Oh, I'm American, all right. Just as my grandma would have wanted me to be. But somehow, I still feel Italian. What is it? Maybe it's the culture, the tradition, roots. I'm not exactly sure what it is. But I try to pass it on to my children. Oh, I guess all I do know is that somehow my children have been cheated out of a wonderful piece of their great Italian heritage. They never knew my grandma.